TNCRadio.live, your commercial driver navigation station. Good afternoon. This is TNCRadio.live, and this is the Truckers Network Radio Show with your host, Shelly Johnson. This is the Truckers Network Radio Show on TNCRadio.live. I'm Shelly Johnson with Tom Kelly. And we're talking with Shelley Juvenile Hesh, CEO of the Women's Trucking Federation of Canada. National codes. Truck mm-hmm. driving is not recognized as a professional skilled trade in Canada. Oh, good grief. So, <laughs> therefore, if you're not on that system, teachers don't teach that to the kids. Right? So, there's no knowledge about it. So, we're slowly trying to change that. Uh, my organization has pil- uh, paired with Skills Ontario, Young Women's Collaborative Initiative. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're hoping by doing that that we'll start to bring more awareness at competitions, um, at the school level. Um, we've done a, a Skills Ontario Women's uh, Young Women's seminar. Uh, we were there for a couple days. The, the kids were fascinated. The girls had a lot of questions. Uh, we bring in a virtual reality. A system where they can, they're actually in it. Um, they were actually shocked at what they could see, what they could feel up into the truck. So it's, it's getting cool. back out. It is. And it's getting back there into the kids. And by bringing that piece of technology, we're actually getting them interested. They actually want to know more about what we're doing. Um, and the thing is, is like, I'll say to them, what do you know about trucking? And usually I get, well, I see you guys on the news for wheel loss, rollovers, fires, right? No, no, no. What, that's all you know? Well, let me tell you about trucking. And I'll try to tell them about all the community involvement that truck drivers and trucking companies are involved in. And they're amazed when they start hearing about, you know, we have trucking for a cure that just, you know, had its 10th year and has raised over $600,000, I think it is now, for cancer. Mm-hmm. And all that money goes there. We have these Special Olympics convoys and how much money they've raised. And actually, I think Trekking for a Cure is close, just under a million dollars now. Uh, we had Trekking for Kids. Uh, so all this stuff that we do to give back to our communities. Um, there's the Truckers Christmas group. Yeah. Um, so there's so much that we do and give back. And they were amazed as they were hearing this stuff, right? Or hearing about us going to speak at, at events. Um, they were like, you guys do all of that. Yes, we do. It's part of what we do. Well, you know, it's so unfortunate. The media focuses on the negative, and it really does not portray things properly. The trucking industry is so very generous and and so very important. They're frontline workers, and when they're always put in a bad light, I think that can contribute to some of the shortages you're seeing in the drivers, too, because you don't have as many as you need to have. I think that's what it is, too. Um, a lot of it is, you know, and I'll say that to mainstream media, you, you only ever come up with the bad. You never come up with any of the good. Uh, mm-hmm. I know a few years of pestering them. We did get them to come out a couple of years ago to uh, film a trucking for a cure event that happened in Woodstock. Um, but other than that, they just they really don't seem interested um, since COVID and the bank of trucker wave during we'll call it phase one of COVID when it first hit. Mm-hmm. Um there was a lot of mainstream attention and uh, basically that's because services and stuff were denied to drivers. Um, right. But since then there's been very little, very little from mainstream media. Again, um, drivers will tell you that, you know, for at, they're being treated like garbage. They've always been treated like garbage. There was a little praise for a little while and, and they're back to being treated like garbage again. And that's so, so it is, it's wrong on so many different levels. Right. So it, it's that type of stuff that we need to change. I mean, it used to be you were proud to say that you were a truck driver. My dad was always proud to say that that's what he did. And now when you get talking to some drivers, when they'll tell you that when they're out somewhere and somebody asks them what they do, they don't want to tell them they're a truck driver. Wow. We tell our kids, this is not the job for you. Stay away from this. I don't want you doing this. Yeah, it's so wrong. We're going to be talking more about trucking with Shelley Juvenile Hesh, CEO of the Women's Trucking Federation of Canada here on TNC Radio. Live. You're listening to, to the Truckers Network Radio Show. I'm Shelley Johnson here with Tom Kelly. Definitely stay tuned for more coming up. This info blog on TNC Radio. Live is brought to you by the Truckers Network at app. 
www.thetruckersnetwork.net. Six things to consider before starting your career in trucking. Truck drivers are often referred to as the backbone of America. They haul roughly 70% of America's freight. Nearly every good consumed in the United States has been shipped by a truck. Right now, the demand for truck drivers is higher than ever. The growing truck driver shortage in America is a topic of concern and has been for the past four years. The United States is in dire need of people to start driving trucks. Are you considering becoming a truck driver, but not quite sure if it's the career path for you? Here are six things potential truck drivers need to know before starting their career in the trucking industry. Know your why. Why do I want to become a truck driver? is one of the first questions you should ask yourself before starting your career in trucking. Knowing and understanding your why is important so that you make sure that trucking is something you'll enjoy. Nothing is more draining than working in a career field that you're not passionate about and excited about. Truck drivers are already more likely to struggle with mental health problems because of the trucking lifestyle. So to avoid dreading your trucking career, ask yourself, Why do I want to be a truck driver? Long work hours. It's obvious that truck drivers spend a majority of their workday in the driver's seat, but many new drivers don't realize how hard it can be sitting for long periods. Drivers spend hours upon hours sitting down. This can result in leg, back, and neck pain. If you're the type of person who cannot handle sitting down for several hours at a time, then truck driving is not for you. Another thing to consider is how long a typical workday is for a truck driver. Drivers are legally allowed to work 14 hours a day, but are limited to 11 hours of driving time. They must take a mandatory 30-minute break by the 8th hour of duty. Following the long workday, drivers must have 10 hours of off-duty time. In a work week, drivers cannot exceed more than 60 hours of work or 70 hours over 8 days. Failure to follow these HOS rules can result in being shut down, fines, and lower carrier safety ratings. A new lifestyle. There's not a career quite like trucking. It's nothing like your typical 9 to 5 Monday through Friday job. It's long hours, days, and most times weeks away from home. Truck drivers often experience loneliness, depression, and anxiety. If you're someone who's used to working with many people, then truck driving will be a shock. Drivers will go days or weeks without seeing their loved ones, and it can really take a toll on truckers, especially those who are new. Adjusting to this lifestyle can be challenging at first, but once you do, you can live a rewarding life as a truck driver. Getting seat time. The more experience you have as a truck driver, the better. With more experience, you'll land better truck driving jobs and better pay. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, truck drivers earn an average of over $40,000 a year. Yet, many trucking companies advertise higher rates of pay for experienced drivers. Over time, you can negotiate a higher rate per mile. Your relationships will suffer. It doesn't matter if you're on the road or at home. Make time for family. Make it a priority to talk to someone in your family once a day. It can be tough for truckers, especially long-haul truck drivers, to maintain relationships with their families due to the trucking lifestyle. Keeping in contact with your loved ones will help life on the road be less lonely. Lack of sleep. Getting the recommended amount of sleep each night is a rare thing for truckers. Although sleep may be difficult for truckers because of the uncomfortable way of living, it's essential to their well-being and safety. Make it a priority to get good sleep and make a sleep schedule. Set an alarm for a certain time and turn off all electronics and get your much-needed sleep. Not getting enough sleep makes life on the road miserable. Although there may seem like many downsides, truck driving can be a very rewarding and exciting career. As a truck driver, you have freedom on the open road and the chance to see America's most beautiful places. For information on trucking, be sure to check out the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.com. A report of child abuse is made every 10 seconds. These crimes can't be excused. Help Attica raise awareness. Donate or be an Attica member for just $25 a year. Become a hero for kids. Be a hero for Attica. This is the Truckers Network Radio Show on TNCRadio.live. I'm Shelley Johnson with Tom Kelly. And we're talking with Shelley Juvenile Hesch, CEO of the Women's Trucking Federation of Canada. 
Shelly, before we went to break, you were saying that some people don't want to admit they're truckers when they're so very important. And there's such a negative perception out there. I, I'm, I'm a, at a loss as to how this evolved. And I'm wondering how we can change public perception because the trucking industry is so valuable and so essential. I consider them frontline workers. It is. We are a frontline worker. Um, and I know I'm going to get some bashing probably from other people that work on the highway. Drivers don't like to consider themselves that. They don't think they're frontline. They don't think they're essential. Um, a lot of them like to think that we're doing the same job we do every day that we have done for our whole lives. That there, there isn't anything special about us. We're just doing what we always do. We keep the economy moving. And I think that's an area that we need to focus on more is that this is something drivers do all the time. Uh, it's not just something that the drivers do during a pandemic. We always do this. Mm-hmm. Um, who we consider frontline workers and heroes is the healthcare department, right? The doctors, the nurses, those people have been lifesavers. Um, so I think that little instance is, is what makes it hard for drivers when people refer to them as frontline or essential. And then it depends on who you are, whether or not that driver is frontline or essential. Uh, I tell that to the driver that tried to make a medical appointment and got told, have you been out of the country within the last 14 days? Well, of course, I was down in the U.S., and I'm sorry. You have to lock up for 14 days at home before you can have a medical appointment. Mm. So how essential am I? Right. There's no accommodation. Right. And, that's and right. That's yes, and I, I don't know what it's like in the U.S., but that is happening all across Canada. Drivers so, can't get into a doctor or a dentist or an eye doctor even to get a simple blood test done. And I imagine trying to find food uh, with all the closures and so forth, that's a huge challenge. I know it's been that way in the U.S. And it varies state by state based on the rules and all of that, too. Yes, and it was the same way up here in Canada, based on what province you were in, um, what you could get, what you couldn't get. So it, it meant a lot of making sure your truck was stocked at home, um, being able to stop knowing where you could stop. Uh, we have some carriers up here that went above and beyond in bringing in groceries, having food, meals made for their drivers. Um, we had some uh, diners and restaurants that were remarkable that stayed open, where donations poured in, where drivers were getting fed for free. Um, these people stayed open. So, you know, we have some incredible people that came out and did a lot. We have people that all of a sudden just started coming out and making meals in a community and bringing them out to various spots to give to drivers. That was really heartfelt and the drivers appreciated that, right? That's, because it, it came from the heart. That's awesome. And, and I've, we've seen some of that here in the United States too. And, and, and we need more of that uh, because uh, drivers are not being accommodated. Of course, I, I know that uh, truck parking in the U.S. is a huge issue. And I imagine it might be the same in Canada. Yes, it's a huge issue up here in Canada. It always has been. Um, the Ontario government is putting in more rest areas here in this particular province. So they are trying, but I mean, nothing's going to happen overnight. Um, it, it's keeping the issues more alive. Uh, it's a severe issue on both sides of the border. Um, you know, we have this thing, you know, it used to be even in the summer months, well, as long as you were parked by nine o'clock, you were good. Now it's still kind of, oh, I better be parked by six or seven. Otherwise, I'm not going to get a spot depending on where you are. Um, and then there's some states or certain areas you don't want to park in at all. Um, so right. it, it's being aware of all those things as well, right? So you have to plan ahead. I mean, and there's so much that goes into trucking, and it becomes cha- more challenging, I think, every day with more rules and heavier traffic and, like you were saying, shortage of parking. I mean, logistically, it's difficult. And It is. It is. Yeah, and with the e-logs, right, um, yeah. it, it's, you know, you know drivers cannot uh, juggle or uh, a, a log book anymore. Um, there's still a massive problem with shippers and receivers that won't allow you to park on site. You know, they may have held you up there eight hours or nine hours loading or unloading. And I don't care if your log says you can't go. You, you Go, go find a place to park, right? Um, so that, that doesn't I know make the, sense. That, that makes no, no sense. No, and I know the FMCSA put some, you know, personal conveyance in there, uh, but unfortunately, those same personal conveyance regulations in the U.S. do not apply up here in Canada. 
So it, it, it's a totally different scenario for a Canadian driver running into that situation than an American driver. So when a Canadian driver is driving in the U.S., do they fall under U.S. law in terms of hours of service or is it still Canadian? No, everything we do is we follow the U.S. hours of service. Okay. But that particular law under personal conveyance, when we come back up into Canada, mm-hmm. doesn't, it doesn't apply. Okay. Um, like we're on a 75-kilometer restriction and we can't be under a load. Um, so it, you have to be bobtail or empty. Okay. Um, so that, that makes a big difference. Uh, whereas down in the U.S., I could still be hooked to a load. Okay. Right. That makes so, it confusing for sure. It does. It makes it very confusing. Um, and it's always been, you know, as a driver, we've been told our whole lives, when you're in the U.S., you follow U.S. rules. When you're in Canada, it's Canadian rules. But there's that exception. Right. Um, the same as the reset. That's a 34-hour reset in the U.S. It's a 36-hour reset in Canada. Okay. So you almost have to have cliff notes to keep track of all of the differences. <laughs> oh, that's just it. You know, it just goes to show the skill that drivers have to have. There's a, oh, yeah. you know, we have to know uh, everything in the U.S. as well as everything up here in Canada, right? So it's just not one-sided. So what do you think will change the perception of driving? Because I think that that will also bring more people to want to be trained as a driver or be involved in some aspect of transportation. I think not just um, the trucking organizations that are out there, uh, but a lot, a lot of our large carriers, we all play a role in how our industry image is out there. Uh, we, we need to start getting more together and getting uh, more videos out there. Um, you know, maybe a few TV spots. We need to get back into our schools. We need to get out there. You know, and, and our trucks are beautiful rolling billboards. Oh, they really are. You know, right. That's where we need to start putting the more positive images of what we do is on those trucks. Um, and get them around. Um, we have, my organization has now wrapped two trailers. Uh, one was the Save Lives uh, campaign and the other one is on human trafficking. Um, mm-hmm. Those trailers get a lot of attention everywhere they go. Uh, we get pictures sent to us. We've seen your trailer. So I think, you know, that is the way we need to go. Uh, we already have the equipment. So it's the cost of throwing some wraps on them. And uh, let's pr- start promoting the more positive side of our own industry. Well, it's a driving we, billboard. It, 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 it is. Sense. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, let's put it where it's at. Mainstream media isn't going to do it for us. We need to That's do it right. ourselves. There you go. Tom, you said you had a question for Shelley. Well, it's kind of following along the, the uh, same stuff you were talking there, Shelley, kind of taking it to the next level. What's the relationship like between Canadian truck drivers and U.S. truck drivers? I know it's been things are weird right now at the border. Um, you, you have to have a decree, a, a decree from God to, you know, just do normal business. Um, what's the overall U.S. Canadian relationship like? as far as trucking is concerned? Oh, the drivers. I think the drivers have always gotten along. All right. You're always going to have your little bit difference of opinion. Um, I think COVID has kind of um, put a little bit of a strain uh, on that area. Yeah. You know, we're still a lot more uh, tighter up here in Canada, regardless of what province you go to, as in social distancing and masks, um, that type of thing. Um, So I think, you know, you have those kind of uh, disagreements. Um, Canadian drivers, like I get talking to a few that say they go into a warehouse to deliver where drivers are normally put into a room and they're the only one with a mask on. Right. Yeah, so yeah. Um, yeah. it seems to be a little bit, um, I don't know. It almost seemed like our American friends didn't take this COVID as seriously as other parts of the world did. Um, lockdowns were very short lived. Um, case counts were higher in, in, in the U.S. Of course, you have greater population than we do. Um, but we're still very much on the, the masks and hand sanitizers and gloves and, and distancing. Um, so it's pretty scary. So I think we all have that one or two friends that are really very COVID paranoid about getting it and other ones that are. They don't believe in masks. They don't believe in vaccines. If I get it, I get it. 
right? Yeah. So I think we have those scenarios as well within the industry. Uh, but as a whole, I could tell you I have a lot of American friends, um, drivers. Uh, they would go out of their way to do anything for any of us. Um, sure. We don't really see that Canadian U.S. We're all drivers. Good. Oh, absolutely. Good. It's okay. one big happy, right. happy family. Yeah, that's really what is. I was hoping you were going to say. Yeah. Right. So that's what it boils down to. Uh, it doesn't matter what side of the border I'm on. Those are my brothers and my sisters of the highway. Right? right. And that's the way that's the way we look at it. Um, I know over the years, the commodity within the driver population has has gone down some. Um, and it's just been morale, I think, uh, as an overall has been. Uh, but we're starting to see more of it. Uh, we're hearing more of it. Um, so, uh, you know, I like to stay positive on it. We're, we, we're, a, we're a family and we need to stay a family um, in order to survive everything that we're up against. Absolutely. Amen to that. Yeah. We're talking with Shelley Juvenile Hesh, CEO of the Women's Trucking Federation of Canada. You're listening to TNC Radio. Live on the Truckers Network radio show. Stay tuned for more. There's some great information here. Stay tuned on TNC Radio. Live. Finding a safe place to park your rig at night can be a challenge on the road. The Truckers Network, a membership resource site for trucking companies, company drivers, and owner operators, proudly partners with Truck Park to offer safe and secure overnight truck parking to all Truckers Network members. Truck Park is the digital truck parking leader and America's fastest growing truck parking service. The Truckers Network exists to link truck drivers with the best quality trucking products and services the industry has to offer. Finding safe overnight parking is crucial for truck drivers, and many drivers struggle with finding available parking spots. The limited parking availability causes drivers to lose sleep, which poses a safety risk to others on the road. Safe parking is valuable for drivers and the cargo they're transporting. With this partnership, Truckers Network members will have access to a discount code and be able to reserve parking spots in real time along their truck route at a reduced price. Truck Park gives drivers access to parking locations across most of the United States. Simply enter the city and state to view available parking spaces nearest to pickup or delivery point, then pay to reserve. Parking rates vary at each location, with some rates as low as $10. Truck Park is a values-based company that empowers truck drivers while providing a safe and unmatched experience. The company offers a quick way to find and reserve parking spots throughout the U.S., Truck drivers have access to Truck Park's free mobile app to easily begin reserving parking spots based on their truck route. About the Truckers Network. The Truckers Network exists to link truckers and trucking businesses throughout the United States. The company's mission is to make the life of a truck driver easier by connecting drivers to the highest quality trucking products and services to keep their trucks on the road. This info blog on TNCRadio.live is brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. ISS score for truck drivers explained and how to find it. An inspection selection system score is called ISS score, was created by the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, FMCSA, to help law enforcement officers determine if the truck should be inspected. The inspection selection system score is frequently used to determine if your truck will receive a bypass command or not. There is often confusion between the ISS score and the CSA score. While there's a correlation between the two, they're not the same thing. The CSA score identifies high-risk motor carriers. The score is based on the performance data of the driver. The ISS score uses a combination of different CSA categories known as Behavior Analysis and Safety Improvement Category. That's basics for short. To determine the carrier's overall inspection rating from 0 to 100. Similar to the CSA score, the lower, the better. What determines your ISS inspection value? Unsafe driving, hours of service, HOS, driver fitness, controlled substances and alcohol, vehicle maintenance and cargo, hazardous material. There are three different ISS ratings categories, inspect, optional, or pass. Inspect, 75 to 100. Optional, 50 to 74. Pass, 1 to 49. ISS scores can determine how often you'll get inspected. Although some roadside inspections are at random times, most will be as a result of a higher ISS score. How to find ISS score. The FMCSA has an online portal where carriers can log in to check their ISS scores. You'll log in using your DOT-issued pen. 
From there, you'll see the company information section on the main screen. Next, click the blue button labeled Inspection Selection System Info. This info blog was brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Need a better driving job? Go to tncradio.live slash driver dash info. This is the Truckers Network Radio Show. I'm Shelley Johnson with Tom Kelly. We're talking with Shelley Juvenile Hesh, CEO of the Women's Trucking Federation of Canada. Um, we were discussing quite a few things here, Shelley, and I was wondering, obviously your focus uh, is women. What accomplishments have women made in the trucking industry in recent years and how how has it evolved? Because I'm sure over the past few decades, there have been massive changes. Oh, I think there has. There's been some big changes. Like early on, uh, you'll talk to some of the more senior vet- veteran truck drivers that we have, and they can tell you stories about there only being men showers in truck stops, mm-hmm. right? Um, those type of things. And now we've come along to where we have both male and female truck uh, showers and restrooms. Um, so I think, you know, we have come a long way. Uh, women just kept plugging forward and, and continuing on and, and starting to be a voice. And I think from a carrier's perspective, they started realizing how much more safer women were out on the road. So that started plugging their interests more um, to the amount of women that are available to work. Like 48% of the available workforce in Canada right now are women. Wow. Okay. All right. So let's get them into trucking. And the fact that you don't just have to be a driver in trucking. There are so many career opportunities available. Mm -hmm. Right. It's amazing sometimes when I'm speaking to students or uh, career resource centers and tell them about IT positions and stuff like that. They look at you and they go, IT, what does IT have to do with trucking? Well, you wouldn't believe the telematics and stuff that we have on our trucks and our trailers and the equipment. Yeah. Right. So it's a whole area that people don't even realize goes with trucking. Right. Beyond driving. Um, I know some ladies that have been working in the office and they now drive a truck. Right. So you have all these different scenarios and I think they're important. Right. And getting those things out there is important. So some of the ladies that started in the office, they were basically what inspired after hearing the stories and they wanted to get out on the wide open road and experience the freedom out there. And that's, that's just it. Right. And they were to the point of, okay, well, career change. Sure. Right. Um, And they'll tell you like listening to their drivers come in and talk about different things. Uh, When we run our various scholarship, we've actually had ladies at, at trucking companies um, that have applied right, uh, for the opportunity to have that scholarship to to obtain their A license. So I think the more stories we get out there about what people are doing in our industry, whether they're drivers, diesel technicians, or office staff, um, really helps promote our industry. You know, you, you mentioned a couple of things earlier that you were uh, working on, Shelley. One of them you mentioned was the uh, Truckers Christmas Group. And I know there's lots of things like that that um, – that truckers get involved in that, you know, the average person just doesn't understand or know anything about that kind of stuff. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the charities that the uh, truckers support and work with uh, up in Canada? We, we, we just had a, a big discussion on some of these and some of them have been hard, really hard to do the last year because of the COVID lockdown and stuff like that. But ignoring that for a moment, you know, things that uh, truckers and, and, uh, you know, your, your role in charities, uh, say, prior to the uh, COVID experience, how that has worked up in Canada? Well, I'm a volunteer with the Truckers Christmas Group, um, which is a U.S. organization, but they help drivers on either side of the border mm-hmm. um, at Christmas time. So um, I've enjoyed volunteering there, um, watching that organization grow. Uh, but also on the same note, it, it's very um painful to hear stories um, that drivers are going through um, or ones that are, you know, are fighting for their lives um, at Christmas time or have had a wreck 
um, and, and how it's affected their families. Um, so it, it's really hard, especially when we're doing that at Christmas time, um, to find out how much loss there is and how alone uh, drivers feel um, and how really little benefits and stuff that drivers really do have. Um, and the fact that, you know, we need to uh, bring out there more to drivers the awareness of having stuff outside of whatever their company provides them, right? Um, the the long-term disability benefits, uh, things like that, um, which a lot of companies don't provide, um, and making drivers aware that they need to, right? This, this is something they need to do for themselves and for their families. So I think that's important. Um, uh, trekking for a cure um, is a cancer convoy up here in Canada. I've been involved with that, volunteering for quite a few years now. Uh, that was something my husband was very passionate about doing. Um, there's nothing like seeing a whole bunch of drivers stacking out their trucks in pink and wearing pink, regardless of sex, um, trying to have the best pinked out truck, um, show and shine. And, of course, all the money raised um, goes to cancer. So it, it's quite the, quite the experience. Uh, to see 90 some odd trucks all decked out in pink and the drivers just uh, <laughs> hanging so out cool. together. That's cool. it, it is. It's, it's a really um, great experience. Um, then we have the Special Olympics convoys, which are for Special Olympic athletes. Really? <laughs> Excuse me. Yes. So you actually have Special Olympics participants right along? or? Yes, they do. Oh, yeah. Cool. So that's, that's who sits in your jump seat. Um, oh, fantastic. <laughs> so, yeah, so, the, you know, those would be the ones that, like, kind of stick out the main that drivers seem to do a lot of. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, you know, there's ones that'll do one up. It'll be uh, a, for, a, what did they call it, make a wish, stuff like that. So you'll see mm-hmm. stuff for that. Um, we also have carriers that do a lot for prostate cancer. So there'll be prostate cancer stuff as well, um, barbecues, things like that. Um, we're finding that a lot more companies now are getting involved themselves and uh, maybe they put on a barbecue every Friday throughout the summer um, and what you throw in is going to a charity, right? So, uh, which drivers, everybody's really big on doing. So we have those type of things usually involved locally. Um, there's always some kind of toy drive, especially at Christmas time. So uh, at our company, we have the bin set up and we donate toys, Um there's also where you can support a family for this for the winter for Christmas in particular. So you'll often see for that. Um, the course in the Christmas parades that a lot of us donate our time to and, and our trucks to mm-hmm. go out and haul afloat. Um, so it, there's so much positive and, and things that we do in, it, with involvement within local communities. Um, Absolutely. And you're I think about- people forget that we live there too, right? Sure. Sure. Right. right. Well, if people disassociate for some reason. I, I, I don't know. I, I think sometimes they think the trucks drive themselves, and <laughs> that's not the case. Um, well, at least not yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's another that's another day and, and another argument, certainly. Um, I like to see people behind the wheel because I like to see people employed. So that's my opinion on that. But, um, yeah, um, Shelly, you were also talking about trucking for kids. What is that? That's a charity your organization's been involved with as well? Um, we haven't personally, uh, some of our members have, were involved with that. Okay. Um, we can only go so far, right? Okay. Um, so, uh, we had members that were there. Um, I believe now due to, uh, economic circumstances, that charity, um, is no longer in existence. They were not doing one this year. Okay. Um, but they did a lot of stuff for a local hospital, um, as in a hospital room, uh, toy rooms. That type of thing, that's what they were big on. Mm -hmm. Uh, Unfortunately, you know, just economics itself and now uh, we have COVID thrown into the mix has really affected um, a lot of the truck shows up here in Canada. Oh, it's Um, it's like this too. Yeah. Yeah. uh, Where I think we only had maybe one or two truck shows all of last year that were outside events. Um, And it's not looking like we'll be having any this summer either at this point in time. So it's, it's really hard. 
Well, it's presented a challenge for all organizations, nonprofits. They rely on those venues so that they can get the word out, they can meet people, they can get the sponsorships that they need. And uh, this darn virus has just fouled up all kinds of things. And I think people are relying more on the Internet, which is good if they can find their way around. I mean, that's that's a whole new universe uh, in a whole new way of doing things. Of course, people are more accomplished now with Zoom and that sort of thing. But I bet it's it's presented some challenges for your organization to get the word out, too. It is. It's really uh, put up a lot of barriers. I know, like, uh, on my own company, we still have five drivers that are on flip phones. Oh, oh gosh. Okay. Yeah, you know, when okay. you think about it, yeah. Oh, Not gosh. everybody's uh, married to the Internet. They're just kind of like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's just it, right? There's a lot that don't. Um, so it's posing a challenge. And uh, let's face it, we can do a lot of things on Zoom, but there's a lot of things we still can't do on Zoom, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I think, you know, it's an all right platform. But now we've talked, you know, you get talking to people and they tell you that are that are working from home or are part of an organization. You know, I've been on that computer since 8 o'clock this morning. I didn't get off to 5 o'clock today. It's just <laughs> one thing after another. Oh, sure right? it is. Yeah. yeah. Right. So it's getting to be an overabundance of Zoom. Um, and sure, maybe it's given us the opportunity to attend some events that we wouldn't be able to attend otherwise. Yeah. Um, you know, being as they're in a different country, a different state, a province. Uh, but there's getting to be so many of them. It's like picking and choosing which one you're going to go to. Um, but I think we still all miss that human interaction, that networking that we were all able to do. Um, I've been to Matt's. I absolutely love going to that. I've been to Gats, same thing. Um, and now we're not able to go, right? So it's just like you really miss those events. Sure, yeah. um, Truck World was another one. It's uh, up here in Canada. I mean, it was postponed. So it's just all these things, right? So I think, you know, we start missing them. Um, we have a lot of truck. Uh, races up here, especially in the province of Quebec, uh, they were all canceled last year, and it that sounds like right now. I don't know if we'll have any this year, right? So you miss that stuff. You betcha, and and you don't have the face to face interaction. And human beings really aren't meant to be sitting in front of a screen all the time. They need to unplug. It's not natural. You need to have the interpersonal uh, contact. We're talking with Shelley Juvenile Hesh, CEO of the Women's Trucking Federation of Canada, right here on TNC Radio Live. We're going to have more coming up on the Truckers Network Radio Show. Please stay tuned. Shelley's got some great information. This info blog on TNC Radio Live is brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Three simple tips to improve your CSA score. There are millions of drivers on the road every day. That's why trucking companies must stay compliant with federal safety regulations. Staying compliant with federal safety regulations not only helps keep yourself and others on the road safe, but also helps improve your safety scores. A good CSA score is extremely important to the success of a trucking company. Drivers that have a good score have access to preferred loads and reduced insurance rates. Here's some tips on how to improve your CSA score. What is the CSA program? CSA, Compliance Safety Accountability, is a program of the FMCSA that holds truck drivers accountable for their role in safety. The main goal of the CSA program is to prevent accidents from happening on the road and to identify high-risk commercial motor carriers. Although the FMCSA runs the CSA program, they don't issue CSA scores. The FMCSA created an online safety measurement system that records data like roadside inspections and crash reports from the last two years. The data is updated monthly and assigned to your DOT number. The FMCSA then organizes the SMS data into seven categories, often referred to as basics, behavior, analysis, and safety improvement. How to improve your CSA score. When it comes to CSA scores, the lower the scores, the better. Your CSA score determines whether or not you'll get a visit from the DOT. Over time, your CSA score can be improved by making safety a core focus of your trucking company. Prioritize pre-trip inspections. A large percentage of CSA violations are truck-related. This could all be prevented with a pre-trip inspection. Pre-trip inspections 
are one of the most important things you need to do before any trip. A simple pre-trip inspection helps you get in tune with your truck before you drive. It lets you know if anything's wrong with the truck or needs to be fixed before hitting the road. Not only are you required by law to perform a pre-trip inspection, but it also keeps you and others safe while on the road. Check out our blog, Four Reasons Why Pre-Trip Inspections Are Important for Truck Drivers. Be more cautious of who you hire. Hiring drivers with a good driving record is crucial if you want to have a good CSA score. Remember that CSA scores use your driver's crash records to calculate your score. So if you hire a driver with a bad driving history, you're taking on more of a risk. Challenge Citations You have at least two years to challenge a violation. If you challenge a violation and it gets dismissed, it'll be removed from your company's CSA score. The Truckers Network has teamed up with CDL Consultants and CDL 360 to provide a full spectrum of safety, compliance, and audit services to our members. CDL Consultants has successfully reduced or dismissed over 35,000 violations and tickets. They've worked with tens of thousands of drivers and companies, including many top 100 carriers. If you need to fight a violation, search for a CDL Consultant on the Truckers Network webpage at app.thetruckersnetwork.com. Net. This is the Truckers Network Radio Show on TNC Radio. Live. I'm Shelley Johnson with Tom Kelly, and we're talking with Shelley Juvenile Hesh, CEO of the Women's Trucking Federation of Canada. The WTFC has partnered with the Ontario government with a 14 week training to get women and underrepresented groups into trucking and transportation. Shelly, I was wondering if you could give us details on what all of that's going to cover and how many sessions you're going to have. Uh, It sounds really cool. Uh, Basically, what that program is going to do is like a two weeks of soft skills. Mm -hmm. And by soft skills, we're talking about uh, coping skills, uh, driver health and well-being, uh, fitness. Um, so we had Mark Manera from the fitness company come in, um, mm-hmm. talking to him about that type of fitness and, and how to keep fit and healthy on the road. Mm-hmm. Cause those are two areas that we feel are left out. Nobody's concerned about those areas for drivers. Um, we brought in various speakers to talk to him about different things about the importance of mechanics. Um, so we bring in different employers from various parts of the sector explaining what they do, how they do the job. We talked about driver etiquette because um, that's a big thing today. You know, people that park in the fuel islands don't remember to turn off their headlights when they're parking at night, those type of things. Mm-hmm. So we go over all of that. Um, we're trying to make sure in that two weeks that they're going to learn a, l- a lot of what they don't learn at trucking school and sometimes things that are over not – remembered um, through their driver training program. Uh, Then they will carry on on a 200-hour TTSAO approved training program uh, through Challenger Truck Training Academy. Um, So they will get all their hands-on experience and then pass the road test from there. Uh, Then they will do four weeks placement with an employer. So we're trying to give them a little bit of everything. Um, They're already interviewing with companies now, even though uh, they haven't started their training yet so that they get a fit for what the companies have to offer, what the companies are looking for. Um, so we found that that's been very successful. Um, we also brought in like Bruce Outridge from the Lead Pedal podcast, and he spoke to them about uh, being an owner operator to a company. Um, we had also had um, uh, Michael Zellick in from Wellington Motor Freight to talk to them about their rights and responsibilities. Mm-hmm. So they know what their rights are, what they're responsible for. Um, Cause those are other areas that we find are lacking. A lot of times mm. they just don't know sure. what their rights are and that they have the right to refuse unsafe work. Um, and it doesn't make them as some drivers like to say, just to, you know, maybe you ought to do something else. You know, we've always done it. Well, that's the attitude in our industry. You know, we've always done things this way. Well, no, we're changing it. Right. So you're either going to be a part of the continue to be part of the problem or be part of the solution. Right. Um, so making sure that these people are very well rounded with the knowledge they have, um, getting them hooked up with mentors. Now, uh, we have an informal uh, mentorship group 
um, that has over 360 members in it. They are, they have all been brought into that where they can ask any question because no question is a dumb question is what we like to tell them. Uh, we try to tell them to avoid Facebook trucking groups asking uh, because they have a problem because the odds are they're not going to get the right answer. So I think this is a great perspective and I would think this would make them a more confident, well-rounded driver. That's what we're hoping, right? It'd give them a, just a little bit more knowledge than that they would have had just going and paying for a truck driving course and, and trying to get a job. Well, I hope- um, and working with carriers is really helpful to us because we're hearing areas that they have concern of. So it, it's been great. You're not implying, Shelly, are you, that sometimes uh, Facebook gives wrong information? Oh, yes, it does. <laughs> I think we've all been there, right? Yeah, um, I think maybe Facebook isn't always trustworthy. Yeah. That's it. It's a good place to socialize, but that's yeah. about it. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. right. That's right. So this is opening up a whole new career for people, and they get on the ground running. They can actually get hired at the end of the, the game, and that's so cool. And you've got the mentors, which I don't think that actually exists normally, does it? Uh, a mentor group that uh, drivers can rely on when they aren't sure what to do? or No, it doesn't. And some companies now are starting to get where they're, they're focusing more on mentoring within their own companies um, and starting that. Uh, but sometimes, you know, you're still afraid to ask somebody you work with a question, right? Because you don't want them to think you're an idiot. Right. So here you come to you have this group that is non judgmental, that is non is unbiased, and you can ask whatever you want. Right. Um, so we have everything from newly licensed drivers in this group right up to company owners. We have OPP, we have DOT in there, we have some CMB inspectors, we have mechanics. Um, the oldest drivers in that group have about fifty five years experience behind the wheel. Um, and safety and compliance officers. Um, we have people in HR in there. Um, and basically is, is that there's no recruiting allowed in this group. Everybody is there because of who they are and what they do, not the company they work for. So everybody helps everybody. Excellent. Doesn't matter who you work for. I'm not sure this is in the U.S., but this would be something that would be a very good uh, approach as well because uh, there are a lot of um, – well, there's going to be a mandate, I believe, in a year or so. Uh, Tom Kirk could tell us, Tom, um, that CDL training has to be done. Uh, but uh, in order to get your CDL, I don't think currently in the, in the U.S. you have to take training. But I can't imagine getting in a semi not knowing. <laughs> I personally would want to have the training. And we have, manda- say- we have mandatory entry-level training right across Canada now. It that came into sense. effect in January. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah, and I think that's that's the same here in the U.S. very shortly. We've got a little over a minute, Shelley. How do people get a hold of you if they want to be involved with this uh, training? And how do they reach your organization to become a member or to sponsor you? Um, they can reach out. Our website is www.wtfc.ca. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Um, and you can reach me personally at Shelly, S-H-E-L-L-E-Y-U, at WTFC.ca. Or you can give us a call at 519-591-6722. TNCRadio.live, your commercial driver navigation station. Hi, this is Tom Kelly, managing partner of Emsico LLC, doing business as TNCRadio.live. The website TNCRadio.live and any content or podcast related to the website are copyrights of Emsico LLC, copyright 2021. All rights reserved. Any redistribution or reproduction of all or any part of the contents in any form is prohibited other than the following. We welcome you to download and play the publicly available podcast and share with others for personal use. Please acknowledge TNCRadio.live as the source of the material. You may not, except with our express written permission, distribute or commercially exploit the content. And while we endeavor to keep the information up to date and correct, we make no representations or warranties of any kind expressed or implied 
about the completeness, accuracy, reliability, suitability, or availability with respect to the website, the podcast, or the information, products, services, or related graphics contained on the website or podcast for any purpose. Any reliance you place on such information is therefore strictly at your own risk. For additional information, including details regarding monetization of this podcast, send email to podcasts at tncradio.live.